In a previous video, I talked about why aircraft use AM as opposed to FM on VHF and why it's unlikely they'll upgrade to some kind of newfangled digital system anytime soon. The main reason is the capture effect. The capture effect occurs in FM when two transmitters are on the same frequency. The receiver will pick up both signals, but only the stronger one will be audible at the receiver output. This isn't the case in AM, where a combination of the two signals will be heard, in addition to a heterodyne when signals are on slightly different frequencies. As I said in my previous video, in the UK and Europe, the 25kHz VHF airband channels have been split into three 8.33kHz channels. This means that multiple aircraft talking to a single ground station can be separated by 8.33kHz so as not to interfere with each other. The capture effect in FM can be useful because it means that interference levels are reduced when the occupancy of a channel is high. The effect occurs because the receiver detector and IF strip function as a sort of limiter and remove any amplitude variations on the signal. This has the effect of suppressing the weaker signal and allowing the strongest one through. The capture ratio is used to measure the capture effect. The capture ratio is the minimum ratio in decibels or dB between two signals on the same frequency for a specified reduction in the unwanted signal at the output. A reduction of 30 dB for the unwanted signal is used for this. A capture ratio of 2 dB applies to a typical FM broadcast tuner. This means that if the desired signal is 2 dB stronger than the undesired signal, it'll capture the demodulator and suppress the unwanted signal by 30 dB. In AM, two pilots on the same channel will both be audible to a degree, therefore making it easier for air traffic controllers to hear all radio traffic, which is especially useful in an emergency. I received quite a few comments from people claiming I'd forgotten about or neglected to include the effects of Doppler shift in relation to VHF airband communications. To this, I responded that I didn't forget Doppler shift. It's just that its effects are so negligible and irrelevant that there was no real reason to include it, so I thought it might be interesting to explain why. Doppler shift, or the Doppler effect, refers to the change in frequency or wavelength of a wave in relation to an observer moving relative to the source of the wave. What does that even mean? Well, in simple terms, when a sound or light source moves towards you, the waves are compressed, leading to a higher pitch for sound or a shift towards the blue end of the spectrum for light. If the source moves away from you, the waves are stretched, resulting in a lower pitch for sound or a red shift for light. This phenomenon is commonly experienced with passing vehicles, especially something like a police car with its siren running, or in astronomy, when observing stars and galaxies. Now, I can hear you asking, what does this have to do with aircraft? Well, in the context of an aircraft transmitting a VHF radio signal to a control tower or ground station on the ground, the Doppler shift can be observed. As is the case with how I described sound and light earlier, as an aircraft moves towards the control tower, the radio waves it transmits are compressed. Let's not forget that radio waves travel at the speed of light. This compression results in an increase in the frequency of the signal received by the control tower or ground station. Simply, the control tower or ground station will receive the aircraft's transmission on a higher frequency than what is actually being transmitted by the aircraft's radio. Conversely, if the aircraft is moving away, the radio waves are stretched out. This stretching causes a decrease in the frequency of the signal received by the control tower or ground station. Therefore, the control tower or ground station receives the transmissions on a lower frequency than the original transmission. In my reply to the comments on Doppler shift on the previous video, I used the analogy of the International Space Station that presents a beautifully clear VHF signal down to Earth. The International Space Station is travelling around the Earth at roughly 17,150 miles per hour. Astronauts transmit 2 meter VHF signals down to radio amateurs and educational groups here on Earth, just a few megahertz higher than the VHF civil airband, and there is some noticeable Doppler shift. The high speeds involved cause these radio signals to appear to shift in frequency due to the Doppler effect. This Doppler shift will cause the space station's transmit frequency of 145.8 MHz to appear as though it's 3.5 kHz higher in frequency, around 145.8305, when the space station is approaching the receiver location. 
During the 10 minute pass, the frequency will move lower, shifting a total of 7 kHz down to 145.7965 as the ISS goes out of range. Therefore, you really need a radio that tunes in 1 kHz or smaller steps to follow the shift in frequency. Now, it's extremely important to note that perfectly acceptable results are obtained with a radio left on the downlink frequency of 145.8 MHz. Therefore, the Doppler shift and its effect are somewhat negligible. So, back to the original point, and we need to make some comparisons here. The speed of the International Space Station, as I said, is around 17,150 miles per hour. Let's say the average airliner is travelling at 500 knots or 580 miles per hour ish, and the International Space Station is 248 miles or about 1.31 million feet in altitude above the Earth's surface, compared to an airliner which may average 30,000 to 42,000 feet in altitude. It's clear, and I'm sure you've already guessed, that the Doppler effect in relation to aircraft on VHF is even more negligible when compared to the International Space Station. VHF AM signals are most commonly propagated along a line of sight, the limiting factor for terrestrial transmissions being the curvature of the Earth. The radio waves can't see beyond a theoretical horizon. Aircraft have the advantage of altitude when in flight, and much longer straight line air-to-ground paths are possible than ground-to-ground -ground routes. So, in relation to the distances some airliners cover, where they use HF radios to communicate, the distance between an aircraft talking to a ground station on VHF is generally much less. This further negates any noticeable effect of the Doppler shift. Let's also consider that most aircraft talking to a ground station are lower in speed and altitude as they're approaching or departing an airport, further negating the effects of Doppler shift. Although aircraft cruising at full speed and altitude over land do talk to ground stations on VHF, but you get my point. The value of Doppler shift for an air to ground transmission is assumed to be 140 Hz, regardless of speed, altitude, and distance. The effective acceptance bandwidth of VHF airband receivers includes the Doppler shift. The ARINC specification allows for 140Hz Doppler shift since the aircraft is moving with respect to the ground station. It may be considered, therefore, that just like the frequency drift of the receiver, this doesn't need to be included in the calculations. However, as it's not known whether Doppler shift is included in all receiver measurement values, a conservative approach has been chosen to reduce the frequency offset by the Doppler shift. As I said earlier, the 25kHz VHF airband frequencies have been split into three 8.33kHz channels. This means that a 140Hz Doppler shift is minute. In calculating minimum frequency separation, Doppler shift is also taken into account for ground-to-air transmissions due to the movement of the airborne receiver. For air-to-air -air transmissions, the Doppler shift could, in principle, be greater due to the potentially higher relative velocity. However, due to the angular variability between the aircraft, Doppler shift on the air-to-air -air path is also assumed to be 140Hz. This shows just how insignificant the Doppler effect is at the high speeds and frequencies involved with civil, military and general aviation. If you like these more technical videos, then let me know in the comments. While we're on the subject, my friend Chris produces a great database of all UK air traffic control frequencies from major airports, military such as the RAF, Army and Navy, the Ministry of Defence, SAS sites, general aviation airfields, gliders, offshore rigs and everything else you can think of. It's a great tool to put in your radio for if you're near an airport, at an air show, or out and about with a scanner. There's over 2000 frequencies for the UK to get you started. I'll put a link to a non-affiliate digital download below.